So I want to welcome everybody uh, to today's press conference um, about Academics for Peace and the persecution of academics in Turkey. Um, there have been some new developments and disturbing developments in just the last 24 hours, um, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, my name is Chad Kautzer. I'm an associate professor of philosophy uh, at the University of Colorado, Denver. And I'm here as a visiting research scholar at the CUNY Graduate Center. Um, we've pulled this press conference together with the help of a lot of people, and I want to uh, just do a general thank you to everyone who's helped, um, from Greta and Olga at the center here, um, to all the panelists for stepping up and speaking on such short notice. I'd like to thank the press for coming, and I'd like to thank you um, for coming as well. I want to remind you also that there are uh, empty chairs up in the front if you want to make your way up. Um, just be uh, conscientious of the, of the stands and the cords when you do so. Uh, we're going to try to keep this to one hour. Um, so our first speaker today um, is Elam Delikanli from the Research Institute on Turkey. Um, and I'm going to be shifting the microphone between the speakers, so we'll have a little pause while we do that. So I uh, will turn it over to Elam. Um, academics for Peace in Turkey have been targeted by the government and media for initiating a petition called We Won't Be a Party to This Crime. And this brief letter called for the right to live, liberty, security, and asking the government to end the curfews in the Kurdish region of Turkey. Um, by January 11th, it was signed by 1,128 academics in Turkey and supported by 356 international scholars. <laughs> In the aftermath of the press declaration, the signatories from 89 universities across Turkey were accused of being supporters of terror and traitors by the President of the Republic, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Many government authorities, the Council of Higher Education, Inter-University Council, and the presidencies of various universities. Um, as the Research Institute on Turkey, we, an interdisciplinary group of researchers, academics, artists, and activists, we are in full support of our colleagues in Turkey, and I would like to dedicate the rest of my time summarizing the course of events that took place after the initial declaration of the petition uh, based on the recent um, report prepared by Academics for Peace Committee on January 23, 2016. In the days following the press declaration, a deliberate lynching campaign was kicked off. Threats, intimidations became commonplace, and many of our colleagues' safety was under threat. Um, university presidents who took President Erdogan's uh, accusations literally started administrative inquiry processes without any legal uh, justification. Extra legal practices such as firing and preventive suspensions have come to violate the right to work of many fellow academics and researchers. This process clearly illustrates the dissolution of the freedom of expression and academic autonomy in Turkey. As of today, as um, Chad mentioned, another wave of house raids took place in Bolu and investigations are filed for academics in Istanbul and Yıldız universities. Thus far, we have learned that the signatories will be brought to court um, under the famous Article 7 of the Anti-Terror anti Law uh, for propagandizing in favor of the terrorist organization and or under the Articles 301 and 216 of the Turkish Penal Code for insulting Turkishness. This report is an attempt to compile the de facto and de jure uh, violations that signatories and researchers have experienced after January 11, 2016. It depicts that urgent necessities and demands in terms of life safety, work security, legal support and other forms of collective support. In the majority of the universities where signatory academics and researchers are employed, the university administration, local media, and various hostile groups collectively execute a lynching campaign as motivated by the government and the national media. Um, while numerous university presidencies denounce the petition, signatories are being indignified, forced to resign, and inflicted with extrajudicial dismissals or conditional suspensions. Our colleagues are subjected to various allegations such as being traitors, terrorists, or so-called academics. They are facing death threats and investigations aiming at the most severe punishment possible, 
and un unemployment with no social benefits. These threats and attacks are not only inflicted by the high rank officers of the state and government, but also by notorious criminals such as Sedat Peker, who publicly voiced um, death threats. A statement including the phrases, we will stream their blood and take a shower in it, could be viewed on the personal website of this person. On um, January 14, 2016, uh, Association of Libertarian Legists, uh, and on January 18, 2016, Labor Union of Educators filed a criminal complaint against such a hate and hate speech and intrusions of Sadat Peker. Another practice of targeting was the news in the Beyaz Gazette where ind individual signatories were listed along with their photographs. After the petition was uh, released, public prosecutors in many cities started investigations and uh, prosecutions against the signatories based on various articles of the Turkish Penal Code. Um, and searches were warranted for the offices and homes of the academics and they were taken under custody, particularly in Bolu, Düzce, Kocaeli, Bursa and Van. As of January 20, 2016, all were released. And the university presidencies perceived the statements of the President, Prime Minister, Council of Higher Education and Inter-University Council as orders and started the administrative investigation processes without any legal basis. So what are the urgent needs and demands of academics for peace? The academics have serious life safety issues after being targeted by local and national media, being imposed a smear campaign within the campuses and being unlawfully investigated by the university presidencies. This problem persists for all of our signatory colleagues, yet more severely pronounced for those working at provincial universities. Many academics cannot go to their offices or have to change cities due to safety issues. A large network of, of judicial support was set up for those who are under legal investigations. However, especially in Istanbul and Ankara, the judicial support has to be strengthened for the academics who were not called for testimony yet or whose prosecution processes are ongoing. A strong judicial support has to be established for closely monitoring the disciplinary investigations unlawfully issued by the university presidencies and for supporting academics who have received or will receive conditional suspension or will be fired from work. The right to labor of many academics, especially those working at private universities, um, which regulates the academic position for research assistance, is a, it has temporary position and is not guaranteeing a safe work prospect. And through assistantships, we're being, and, um, we're being terminated. Going forward, a strong solidarity fund must be set up, and the academics who will be fiscally affected by the situation have to be supported. To this end, democratic NGOs, for example, um, ATIM sent the labor union of most signatories, must be included in the process and a solidarity campaign should be established. Regarding the psychological dimensions of the incidents, including the life threats, targeting and unlawful investigations, psychological support mechanisms should be established within the academics for peace. At this report, as this report was completed on January 20, 2016, the process involving unlawful investigations and threats were ongoing at varying levels. After the initial 1,128 academics were targeted, the petition was open for signatures for another five days. Although some of our colleagues were forced to withdraw their signatures, the final number of uh, signatures amounted to 2,238. Besides many professional organizations, academics, NGOs organize solidarity campaigns and petitions domestically and internationally. The solidarity signatures exceed, exceeded tens of thousands. Complete lists of supporters can be found on the Tumblr site International Solidarity for Academics for Peace. The steps taken by the government hint that a much more difficult process is awaiting us in the coming days. After the first uh, signatories were targeted, those academics who joined the petition campaigns to offer solidarity and support for the first signatories and for academic freedom have also been subjected to investigations and targeted by the mass media. It is leaked to the press that rearrangements for the election, selection and appointment of the university presidents is being discussed and the government prefers direct presidential appointment of the university presidents by Council of Higher Education. Another regulatory change has been opened to discussion for the law on civil servants, which is directly related with job security measures. It is anticipated that through these legal changes, precarious employment and work conditions will be institutionalized in many sectors, including the universities. 
We are highly concerned about our colleagues in Turkey. The harassment and attacks started way before this petition, targeting academic freedom in especially social sciences. Academics who choose to work in related fields face seven years of jail time, which jeopardizes their academic freedom. Various professional groups and academics around the world raise their voice to support this ongoing effort for academic freedom, and we believe that we will face harsher treatments in the upcoming days, which will require even stronger acts of solidarity. Research Institute on Turkey urges the international community to be aware of the exacerbating situation and take solidarity actions with all legitimate means. I will also shortly um, share a message from Scholars Rescue Fund. Um, Scholar Rescue Fund from Institute um, for International Studies have been wonderful and have successfully helped with two scholars at risk, and they are a great source if anyone is interested in knowing more about them. They can um, go on the website. Thank you very much. We'll go next. <clears throat> As I said, uh, my name is Chad Kautzer. I, um, in response to calls from colleagues and friends in Turkey after the persecution started, um, I wrote uh, a letter of solidarity um, two weeks ago, and that started to circulate um, uh, uh, with support both from within the United States and then international support. Um, uh, Chetum Chidum also helped me write that letter. She's not here today, but I want to acknowledge her efforts with that. Um, that le letter has now uh, garnered uh, almost 1,600 signatures in two weeks, and the outpouring of solidarity has been tremendous. Um, I'm just going to read a few uh, paragraphs from that letter, and then I'll tell you what we're going to do with it and other letters that we have in solidarity. Um, the important point, I mean, we, we know why we're here today, is that we have to um, push back against that. Um, the demands of the people signing this letter are as follows. We call upon the Turkish government to immediately cease and desist all investigations into and prosecutions of signatories to the statement, we will not be a party to this crime. We call upon the Turkish government to immediately release all detainees who are signatories to the statement, we will not be a party to this crime, and to allow travel outside the country and free movement within. We express our solidarity with these brave academics and pledge our support through the public and private means available to us. So this letter has um, generated a lot of support among other organizations that have come in contact with me through that uh, letter effort. Um, one is uh, the UAW Local 2865. Um, this is a uh, teaching union in California that represents 14,000 students. They wrote a letter in support. I have a letter here from the um, UAW 2110, the Graduate Student Union of New York University, who also wrote a letter of support. And finally, I have a letter from the Union for Radical Political Economics, um, who sent me their letter of support. The reason I have these letters is that we will next, uh, next week, early next week, be send sending a delegation to the Turkish consulate here in New York, as well as the UN representative, and we will be delivering all of these letters to them. We'll be sending out a press release about that soon as well. Um, and so we're trying to uh, gather as much of the support that's coming um, through unions, academic organizations, and individual academics into um, one event that will happen next week. And so we will follow up with you then. So with that, I will now turn it over to Paula Chakravarti. And if you want to identify, sorry. Um, thank you, Chad. Can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, my name is Paula Chakravarti. I'm a professor here at NYU in the Department of Media, Culture, Communications, and at the Gallatin School. I'm also part of the Executive Committee of the American Association of University Professors chapter here at NYU. The Executive Committee has signed on to the letter that Chad um, mentioned, and um, speaking, on, um, speaking as someone who is involved at the AAUP, um, as well as a faculty who teaches in media studies, 
Um, I think it's important to just reiterate the, the importance of solidarity um, efforts uh, for academics here um, in support of our colleagues in Istanbul, in Turkey, um, for all the reasons that have been pointed out by the speakers uh, beforehand. I think one thing to keep in mind is that for many of us, um, we've had the opportunity to visit Istanbul, visit Turkey as academics, as in the last 10 years, as academic conferences and um, you know, gatherings have been hosted there, as, and, and Turkey positions itself as a, as a global city, uh, Istanbul especially, positions itself as a global city. Um, we have colleagues, we have friends, we have students um, who are part um, of the group of um, faculty being targeted. Um, and uh, we're alarmed um, and, and you know, outraged at, at what, what is happening. Um, for those of us who are in touch with colleagues in Turkey right now, um, I have received emails um, and telephone calls from faculty, especially junior faculty, who have signed um, the initial petition, um, who just express fear. Um, and uh, fear for expressing legitimate concerns and criticisms. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that this is not an issue of the West holding Turkey, um, uh, you know, the way, in, the, the way in that these issues are positioned in, in places like Turkey, in places like India, as, you know, these are Western criticisms of the government. I think one thing we have to keep in mind is that there are governments all over the world, um, certainly uh, Turkey, India, Egypt, and elsewhere, uh, where academics who speak out are targeted, but this also happens in the U.S., and an association like the AAUP um, and others um, have stood up for the freedom of speech and freedom of research of faculty, and that's what we're here to do. So I'm keeping my um, comments short. Um, but uh, I think the numbers um, on this petition show the solidarity um, that is here um, in, in New York and in the U.S. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Um, next, we have Kumar, who is the International Advocacy Director for Amnesty International USA. Thank you very much. Amnesty International is extremely pleased to be here to join hands with all the other academics and organizations to express our serious concern about what's happening in Turkey today. What's happening in Turkey is something new compared to the crackdowns that the governments have been using against peaceful protest or peaceful opinion. Here a group of people, in this case academics, have been targeted. Normally journalists have been targeted. We have seen journalists being disappeared, killed, imprisoned. But as an institution, as a group, this is the first time, at least to my knowledge, we have seen academics who are about politics, who teach and bring the next generation in various fields have been targeted. The crime is to voice concern about what's happening in one part of Turkey where massive human rights abuses are taking place. Massive human rights abuses amount to targeting of civilians in a ruthless manner, indefinite curfew where people can't even go out to, to collect food or even to get medicine. And there is a group of people who have been trapped in one of the basements who are injured. A couple of people have been died and even ambulances are not allowed to go there. So it amounts to, we can say, it's war crimes that are taking place. So when this type of abuses are going beyond hand, then naturally people rise up and voice concern. So in this case, academics rose up and said, what you are doing is not correct. We as a group, don't want to be part of it. We want you to give a peace a chance. For calling that call in a peaceful and non-violent manner, the answer was extremely brutal. Brutal in a sense, they were called terrorists, which has become a very cheap word nowadays. 
their pictures, as it was mentioned, was being put all over the place and trashed. They should know that this is not an insult to you, it's a badge of honor. You should realize that. These crackdowns we have seen in other countries for other group of people. So that's why we take this very seriously that academics have been targeted this time. And we are pleased that this press conference is being organized in an academic environment and setting. We hope others around this country and the world also follow suit and translate them into an action where any government, in this case Turkey, should think twice before they touch an academic because of their peaceful opinion of raising concerns. Journalists have rise up. So this is a new team, we are seeing it, which is, in a way, when abuses go beyond hand, you find new groups of people rising up. In this case, we have seen another first, I mean, I, as I mentioned, academics as a group they have been targeted, is to bring mafia bosses and crime bosses to the scene in abusing and threatening people. Mafia bosses and crime bosses should be in prison, not in the street, intimidating academics. They have no business in academic environment. They become party to the Turkish government now. So the question now arises, what can we do? This is a, one of the important steps that groups are raising concern. Second is, countries, no matter which part of the world is, they should all rise up. It could be EU, it could be individual countries. We are pleased to note that the US ambassador made some strong statements, which is rare, by the way, when it comes to Turkey, that they are considered more an ally and you know, these things. So it's, it's a pleasant surprise and pleasant uh, move. So we'll be pushing hard, you know, I'm based in Washington, we'll be pushing hard for U.S. to take an extra step and to see whether White House or President Obama can issue a statement or Kerry can issue a statement and to move forward. And uh, it was mentioned that you are going to give a petition. Good luck if you get a meeting because usually they will try to shun. But don't worry. We have seen this over and over again. Now Turkey is joining one of the rogue states, the behavior of a rogue state. So we hope these press conferences and abuses will at least send a strong message to Turkish government and to the Prime Minister that he can't touch academics for their peaceful expression and to expect that the world at large will keep quiet because you have this war on terror tag to protect you. Thank you very much. Next, we have Mariana Hirsch. Mariana, would you introduce yourself? <clears throat> Hi, my name is Mariana Hirsch, and I'm, I teach um, English and Comparative Literature and Gender Studies at Columbia University. I think it's important to note that the petition that was signed by over 2,000 people, we will not be a party to this crime, um, merely asked the government to observe national and international law and to initiate a peace process with the populations of uh, Southeast Anatolia in this um, Kurdish-dominated region um, that um, they have been targeting uh, with major acts of persecution. Almost immediately, the signatories of this petition were targeted by the Turkish government, and they were accused, as we've been hearing, of terrorist propaganda investigated by their universities and otherwise uh, harassed. Um, the international outcry against these state and university actions um, by state and university against these state and university actions against academics in Turkey, the multiple petitions that have been signed by tens of thousands of academics around the world and that have spawned numerous solidarity actions such as this one today 
attest to the gravity of these acts of persecution against academics who were merely asking um, the government to observe national and inter international law. I've attended conferences in Turkey. I've collaborated very closely with colleagues in Turkey, with students on several occasions in the work that I've been doing at the Center for the Study of Social Difference at Columbia. We have a transnational working group where we've been working on the aftermath of violence uh, in Chile, Turkey, and other parts of the world. And we've met on a number of occasions as a working group in um, Istanbul, in New York, and in Santiago. Our last working group meeting was in September in New York, and it was interrupted by the acts of violence that were committed by the, the Turkish state against the Kurdish populations in southeastern Anatolia. And uh, instead of um, giving our papers to each other, having discussions, and um, a public roundtable, we organized a demonstration at Columbia against some of these acts. And I think that it's, um, this is one of the reasons that I'm here. I'm, I'm here to express my shock and dismay uh, at these multiple attacks on academic freedom and freedom of expression that are the cornerstone of a liberal education. Signing a petition is a basic right of free speech, and it needs to be protected by our universities and by our governments. And so must the freedom to demand peace at times of conflict. An organization of approximately 3,000 members um, to express our, the concern of the organization for the unprecedented attacks on Turkish academics. Our Committee on Academic Freedom, um, some members of whom are in the room today, um, has been monitoring the situation in Turkey very closely and is deeply troubled by a pattern of intimidation of um, academic critics of the government by public prosecutors and the Higher Education Council. Um, we've written, a, the committee's written a series of letters um, uh, over the past couple of months. Our most recent letter takes up the case of Professor um, Karay uh, Jalesh Khan, a political scientist um, teaching at Puazici, who was a student, uh, a graduate of NYU, where we're sitting today. Um, so this is not just a story, this is a story about, um, not just a story about people over there, it's a story about uh, our own as well. I mean, people who are here, people around the world. Um, Professor uh, Jushkan is under investigation for allegedly insulting Turkish President um, Erdogan on Twitter. And for this, he is, um, the prosecution is seeking a sentence of eight years uh, and two months, um, which is quite extreme. Um, Professor Jalish Khan's case is representative of a broad and troubling record of increasing restrictions of free speech and academic freedom um, for individuals and groups uh, deemed critical of the Turkish government policies and presidential actions, and we've, we've heard about that today. Um, we urge the Turkish government to take all necessary measures to ensure freedoms are protected and uh, proceedings against academics, um, in particular, uh, or, or including the signers of the peace petition, be dropped. Um, we are, we are uh, really at a troubling moment in history. I'm a historian, so I, sp I speak as one today. We're witnessing the rise of an increasingly <coughs> authoritarian regime before our eyes. Um, if academics are at risk today, other citizens will come under attack tomorrow. Um, academic freedom is the first line of defense and a democracy, and we need to protect it. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I guess I'm last, so I'll be very brief. Um, so just to quickly introduce you to Scholars at Risk, if you don't know us, um, we're an international network of over 400 higher education institutions operating in 39 countries. Um, our goal is to protect threatened scholars, uh, to conduct advocacy, and uh, prevent attacks on higher education communities around the world and <clears throat> to lead research and training uh, to, to promote academic freedom. Um, our members have deep ties within Turkey and within Turkish higher education institutions in particular, and we and they value those ties. Um, naturally, like everyone here, we were uh, gravely concerned uh, at the trajectory that we've seen Turkey taking over the past few weeks. And um, as soon as we learned about what had happened uh, in response to the petition, we reached out to a number of, um, of our partner networks and higher education associations around the world. Very quickly, um, almost overnight, uh, 20 networks representing hundreds of, of universities in every world region 
uh, signed on to a letter um, calling, similar to, to a lot of the letters that we've heard about, calling for uh, the Turkish government to publicly reaffirm its commitment to academic freedom, free expression, and association, uh, to reverse the prosecutions um, and dismiss any inv inv investigations um, of the scholars who had signed the petition and to ensure their release from custody of any scholars who are currently detained um, and to reinstate any scholars who have been terminated or suspended because of their having signed the petition. Um, so 20, 20 networks signed on uh, in, that, in their capacity as academic networks. And in the eight days since, we've had an additional seven networks sign on. And again, uh, these represent uh, hundreds of universities around the world and, and you know, thousands of, of scholars within them. Um, I think the speed and enthusi enthusiasm with which these groups signed on to the letter is a testament to the seriousness of the problem. Uh, the fact that, um, as people have said, this is really a, of a different kind, of a different scale uh, than other attacks that we've seen. Um, and the idea here in, in writing this letter is not only um, to emphasize that we're concerned, but that, these are, that there are relationships here that we value. Um, within Turkey, um, and that the Turkish government should value in, in being a modern uh, academic freedom respecting country where ideas are shared and where, um, where freedom to think and to exchange is, is honored. Um, so like everyone else here, uh, we hope that the Turkish government will very quickly uh, reverse course and restore and reaffirm its, its respect for academic freedom. In the early part of and uh, in the early part of this century, things began to ease. There was some opportunity for Kurds to use their own language. They weren't killed for it. Um, slight openings here and there. The, I was back in Diyarbakir again a couple of years later. It was much better than it had been before. Uh, there was also other openings. The, uh, in Turkey, there was the beginning of an opening towards recognizing the uh, huge massacres of Armenians, which previously had been unmentionable. Uh, there was some reconstruction of you know, Armenian sectors and so on. That changed. I was there as a front ink lecturer a couple of years ago and was very impressed with huge, enormous demonstrations opened right in front of the building where he was killed. And, things were improving. Then the last couple of years, it started regressing again. Uh, Erdogan is becoming more authoritarian. His, uh, his drive to accumulate power has become a kind of an obsession. It's combined with uh, increasing attacks against the Kurdish population, what you described, I need not review. It's, it's related to what's going on in the neighboring countries. In, uh, in uh, some, some of the worst atrocities, in, in terrorist atrocities in uh, Turkey, in fact, the one that inspired his diatribe against the signers of this uh, petition were actually ISIS atrocities. Uh, and uh, Erdogan has been supporting ISIS. The border has been essentially open uh, to jihadis flowing into uh, uh, Syria. Uh, uh, Turkey was accepting um, uh, oil shipments from ISIS. They were compelled to formally block them, but they still come in by smuggling routes. Uh, meanwhile, the main ground forces opposing ISIS are Kurds. Uh, they're the ones who've carved out a region, of a region in Syria, which is the one place that's kind of functioning and, in fact, in very interesting and important ways. But they are also the ground forces. And, of course, uh, uh, Turkey um, is attacking them. In fact, uh, right now, the Geneva negotiations are supposed to take place, but Turkey is insisting that the Kurds not participate. The most important force attacking ISIS can't participate. Uh, uh, they are very closely connected to the uh, Kurdish groups, the PKK in um, Iraq, they're basically offshoots of the same group, and those are you know, the terrorists. And uh, Meanwhile, uh, uh, he's not only giving tacit support to ISIS, but open support to the Al-Nusra Front, which is barely different from ISIS. Uh, 
turf battle, but they're pretty much interchangeable, uh, so much so that the West doesn't want either of them to participate in the negotiations, but they're Turkish allies. And uh, th th so this, in this complex of circumstances, you have uh, Erdogan trying to amass more and more power to himself based uh, by the technique, traditional technique of inspiring the nationalist uh, hysteria and the fear of terror, which in part he's instigating. ISIS bombings are related to Turkish actions. Uh, and uh, I don't want to say that nothing else is involved, but this is a major factor in it. And the concern that this might even just unravel all the achievements of the of this last 15 years, which were not trivial, and go back to the uh, hideous circumstances of the 1990s, it's, uh, I think, very serious. And uh, the other aspect of this is something which, in my experience, is unique in Turkey. And that is the fact that it, it's the only country where I know where the leading prominent uh, writers, artists, uh, journalists, publishers, academics uh, are openly, constantly not only protesting crimes of the government, which is rare enough, but are actually involved in direct civil disobedience against them, uh, facing, sometimes enduring, pretty serious punishment. There's nothing like that anywhere in the world that I know, practically nothing in history like it. It's a unique phenomenon of which Turkey ought to be very proud. Uh, the signers of that petition are examples of it. That's maintaining Turkish honor should be deeply respected. If there ever is any history, maybe there won't be, uh, that'll be recognized as a remarkable contribution. And I think that's the situation we're now seeing develop. Um, unfortunately, the world is keeping quiet about it, but that was true in the 90s as well. It wasn't just the United States was supporting Turkish atrocities. Germany was supporting them, others were. Uh, I remember some really ironic situations, like in 1999, uh, there was an anniversary of NATO, a big meeting of so, uh, commemorating the anniversary of the founding of NATO, and they were all uh, uh, lamenting the fact that uh, right near uh, NATO's borders, uh, there are terrible crimes being committed in uh, the former Yugoslavia. Meanwhile, within NATO, there were much worse crimes being committed with the help of the NATO powers, the crucial help, and that wasn't even discussed. This kind of circumstance, even barely even being reported, you know, uh, that uh, that's what we face in what's called Western civilization. Uh, doesn't merit that term, and this is a good example of it. But the silence today passivity over um, the mounting atrocities against the Kurds, once again, not only in, in, in uh, uh, Turkey, but in Syria as well, is a, a, a kind of a, a devastating phenomenon that's a blight on Western culture and society.